So, hello everyone. Welcome, Roland Hochmuth, the project technical lead of Monasca, and I am Vitek. I'm working at the, as the software engineer at Fujitsu, and we will be talking today about log management with Monasca. So, uh, how many of you have been in the bootcamp today, Monasca bootcamp? Yeah, a couple. And how many of you know Monasca already? Okay. Um, so um, I saw there are some people who don't know about Monasca. So I will uh, start with the introduction, our motivation, uh, and our goals. What, what is uh, what is Monasca and logging with Monasca about? Then I will uh, go to the architecture overview and uh, then give an update about the new features and uh, new development in the project. And at the end, uh, I will present a short demo of, of the solution. So, introduction. When you look at the logs in OpenStack deployment, uh, you have several components and each of them several log files. When you sum them up, on a single node, you get something like 50 or, or even more, depending on the, on the de deployment. And when you take into account that you, in the productive environment, you can have hundreds of servers, then the, oops, um, then it becomes clear that you uh, would not want to uh, look for every single uh, uh, log file somewhere in the system, you need a centralized uh, uh, log management solution. And uh, this need was recognized, of course, by many vendors, and there are many solutions uh, for that. Uh, but there is no standardized uh, OpenStack solutions, and that is our motivation to to replace or, or at least offer uh, uh, an alternative to vendor-specific solutions for centralized logging, offer logging as a service, uh, offer a single endpoint for, for operators and also for, for users to, uh, to post the logs and to, to collect the logs uh, through the single uh, RESTful API. Uh, it brings many advantages, such solution. Uh, you get the isolation from the underlying technology and uh, transport layers, so you don't have to care if the technology uh, changes with time. You have your constant API. Uh, you get authentication, multi-tenancy. You can authenticate with Keystone. You, ha you get the role-based uh, access control to the logs. And you can also validate the, the input. So you could say, uh, I will not accept uh, bigger logs, or uh, the logs have to come with uh, specific metadata. Um, so it helps you to, uh, to, to organize that. Um, which technologies we are using? We are not reinventing the wheel. We are using the proven technologies. So uh, uh, when you when you search for a centralized uh, logging solution, you will the, probably the first uh, uh, catch you will get Elk Stack, which stays for Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Uh, Elasticsearch is uh, uh, mm, it's a search engine and uh, analysis uh, engine for uh, real data. Uh, um, Logstash uh, we use for, for collecting, for, for parsing, and for, for transforming uh, the logs. Uh, it is a, a flexible uh, tool uh, through, the, uh, through the fact that uh, they have many plugins which come already built in with Logstash. You can also uh, develop your own for your uh, customized needs. And Kibana is the modern visualizing tool, uh, which we use as the graphical dashboard. 
The combination of these three is uh, really a competitive solution, uh, which, as I said, is uh, widely, widely used as state-of-the-art technology. And we combine it together with Monasca, which is uh, highly performant, scalable, and fault-tolerant uh, monitoring as a service solution. Um, it is developed on the microservices architecture uh, schema, and the central point of it is, is the, the messaging queue, the Kafka. It is a modern, uh, high-throughput distributed messaging system. Why, <clears throat> why are we bringing uh, monitoring and uh, logging together? Uh, well, they are both related, related topics. They are both indicating uh, about uh, the health of the system. So uh, when you collect the, 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 the metrics, you want to know the health. And uh, if you want to go deeper, you want to look at the, at the logs. Uh, if you want to analyze the root cause, you can start with the metrics and you can go more deeply and uh, search for the, for the log entries. Uh, uh, combining monitoring with logging brings functional and non-functional extensions to, to, uh, to the standard ELK. Uh, you get multi-tenancy, you got the centralized endpoint for operators and users, and it is the basis uh, for, for a good performance and scalability. Uh, through combining the metrics and blocks, you can uh, create alarms on, uh, on logs. So you can create criteria and uh, search for a specific behavior and then define alarms for, for, uh, for this. And uh, yeah, through the correlation of, of metrics and, and logs, uh, you can, you can uh, define scenarios where, where both these criteria are evaluated and then uh, the operator is notified uh, when the alarm is, is launched. Uh, Monasca has become the, the official Big Tent project in November last year, and it won uh, a lot of attention from the community. Uh, so uh, apart from HP and Fujitsu, uh, there is a Time Warner cables since a couple of years already. Uh, they are uh, monitoring their uh, private cloud, which we are, which they are uh, uh, operating. Uh, there is Cisco, who has been focused on on the project Siloska, which is. Uh, collecting the telemetry data from Silometer and putting it to Monasca. Uh, at this summit, uh, Fabio Gianetti will have a talk about integration with Congress, which is a policy as a service project, service. Uh, it will be on Thursday, right? Thursday, yeah. uh, Time Warner, Warner Cable are presenting also on Wednesday. And there is Cray, Broadcom, NEC, EasyStack, SAP, and uh, hopefully in Barcelona there will be more on the list. So uh, let's come to the second part, architecture, which you'd like to take over, Raul. Sure. What do you click? Apparently, I don't know how to operate a computer. Okay, so uh, I'll talk about the um, metrics, really, capabilities that are part of Minasca. Um, so Minasca has been out there as a project. It's been really focused on monitoring as a service. And obviously, today, we're talking about logging as a service. Uh, Minasca projects are designed around a first class RESTful API for monitoring. By first class, I mean that the primary uh, way to interact with the system is via an HTTP endpoint. 
That's how all monitoring data is sent into the system. That's how all monitoring data is queried out of the system in the form of measurements or statistics. It's a way that the system is controlled. You can create alarms in the system, actually alarm definitions. You can look at your alarms and you can create notification methods that are associated with metrics and then send out email or create pager duty incidents or invoke webhooks. Uh, the service basically, uh, it doesn't have too many dependencies in OpenStack, but uh, Keystone is used for authentication. And all the data that we store in the system is scoped to a tenant, and that's key for multi-tenancy. It's highly performant and scalable and fault tolerant. It's based on a microservices message bus architecture, which provides a lot of flexibility, extensibility, load balancing, et cetera. And I have an architectural slide. We're going to go a little more detail about that. Uh, it's built on a number of big data type technologies. Um, you know, monitoring has evolved uh, a lot over the past well, over the past 20 years, but within the last few years specifically, it's been, monitoring has become much more of almost a big data and analytics problem as people try to do more than just look at their data for operational purposes only. Uh, so the people are doing analytics on this, they're using their metering and billing systems, uh, they're going back and doing root cause analysis and you know applying machine learning algorithms to it. So there's a lot of, um, Big data technology is used in Minasca, which Apache Kafka is used for our message queue. If people aren't familiar with Kafka, that is technology that came out of LinkedIn. Uh, and, uh, and within the past year to two years has been really adopted by the big data community as the uh, message queuing technology. There are a few others, but that one has really emerged as the dominant one, I would say, right now. Um, and this week, there's actually the first Kafka summit taking place in um, San Francisco, I believe. Uh, Apache Storm is used in our threshold engine. The threshold engine is used to evaluate alarms. And that's a technology that came out of Twitter. Uh, so Apache Storm is for uh, basically creating a uh, real-time streaming computational engine. You define a graph. Graph in their terminology consists of bolts and um, spouts, uh, and basically in this topology you can do different computations and stream results to other nodes in the graph and aggregate them, etc. But we use it for our threshold engine today. Uh, we support several uh, databases for storing metrics and our alarm state history. We support today InfluxDB and Vertica, and we've been looking at uh, some other databases. Uh, we've been looking at Cassandra and uh, Elasticsearch, potentially. And so that's really for storing the real-time streaming data. We also have, um, you can use MySQL or Postgres within the solution as well. And that's there for storing your config data. The system allows you to store metrics, retrieve them. Uh, you can set alarms and threshold on them, and then send notifications. And basically, that allows you to have a metrics processing system and at the same time do status and health alerting like you would traditionally do in a tool like Nagios. And then we have some other things that are in progress like real-time stream processing. Uh, which one is it? Is the middle? This one. Hmm? Hmm. Okay. I'm not going to touch this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so this is really the architecture slide for the metrics components. Um, up in the upper right, we have our Python monitoring agent. This is an optional component. The monitoring agent is deployed on the systems that you're monitoring most of the time. It also can do what we call active checks, borrowing the tech terminology from Nagios. It can do like HTTP endpoint checks or, or system up-down checks, like host status checks. Uh, so that also can do, um, it, it sends Lots of system metrics like CPU and memory, networking metrics. Um, it has a number of plugins built into it for getting uh, metrics about services like MySQL or RabbitMQ or Kafka in our case. Uh, we're in the process of adding uh, support for more OpenStack services as plugins. It has a built-in StatsD daemon, so if you want to instrument your application, 
and uh, do it stats D style. You can do that with the, um, in combination with the agent, you can do that. Um, we have a, an extension to that that allows you to do the dimensions that are, to use the dimensions that are built into Minoska. Okay, so that's enough about the agent. Within the system, the agent publishes or posts metrics to the API. So we are a push model for uh, what would be called a push model in a monitoring system. Uh, that data is ingested by the API. Uh, not shown in the diagram is the authentication that we do against Keystone. Uh, we don't authenticate with Keystone every packet. We cache auth tokens for, you know, it's configurable at five to 10 minutes usually because you don't want to overload Keystone with lots of auth requests. The, uh, then the data, assuming it passes, it's published to Kafka, that internal, that middle box there is the message queue of Kafka. It's published uh, along with the tenant ID and a, a little bit of other meta information. Okay, so the, the layers there, the persistor, the threshold engine, and the notification engine, those are all independent microservices. They get deployed completely independently of one another. <clears throat> the persistor consumes met metrics from the message queue, Kafka, and stores them in our metrics and alarms database. And then the threshold engine consumes those same metrics, and it has an internal state of all the al uh, alarms that have been defined in the system. <clears throat> and it'll do threshold calculations on them. If a metric has exceeded or, uh, or exceeded its threshold, then that will trigger an alarm state transition event. Uh, so the threshold engine consumes metrics and then it publishes alarm state transition events back to the message queue. The notification engine then consumes those alarm state transition events. It determines whether a notification is associated with it, like an email or a pager duty or a webhook in our case. And then it'll send that off if something's going to be, if, if it needs to be set. Uh, it'll also uh, publish um, those messages back to the retry topic in Kafka uh, if it fails being sent. There's a config database, the lower left, that's MySQL or Postgres, that stores all the configuration information for the system, like what alarm definitions have been de defined, what alarms have been created, and what notification methods have been created. Reason for two databases is uh, MySQL and Postgres, those are really good at transactional type uh, updates, so you have maybe a, you know, a certain number of alarms and notification methods that go through a traditional CRUD life cycle. They get created, they get read, they get updated, and then deleted. It's not a huge amount of data, uh, and it's updated often. Whereas on the right, the reason for those other databases is to store lots and lots of streaming data that's being ingested into the system and being able to uh, sort and group that data efficiently in the database so that when you query it later on, it is efficient. On the upper left, Horizon is sitting up there. Uh, so we have a monitoring panel that we've added to Horizon. And uh, there's also a Python client for um, using it on the command line or using it within Python programs as a library that can be imported. Oops, I failed. I did it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. So that was the metrics part. And uh, we are adding the, the logging part based on the same architecture patterns. Uh, so as I said, we are building on Elasticsearch as the database for real-time da real data, Logstash and Kibana, and leverage all the, all the proven technologies <coughs> of, of Monasca. So what, what it brings, uh, it brings uh, logging as a service, it offers better scalability and performance comparing to the, to the standard ELK. And by integrating with Monasca, we can uh, offer alarms on, on logs. So at the current stage, it's just uh, uh, alarming on, on errors or warnings in the log messages. And the architecture looks like this, as you can see, it's 
uh, from the design very much similar to the metrics part. So we have up here the agents. Uh, we have uh, two technologies. Uh, we use Logstash or Beaver. They are responsible for collecting uh, the log messages from the files, authenticating with Keystone, and sending the data to the, to the log API. The log API authentifies the request, again, uh, appends the, the, the project ID to the log message, uh, validates the, the input, the metadata, and then publishes the information to the Kafka message queue, which is common uh, with the metrics part. And then we have uh, these components at the bottom uh, who are uh, all making their, their, their uh, specific jobs. So we have the uh, log transformer, which is responsible for normalizing and parsing the data from the log messages. So we, for example, uh, parse the log level here and um, you can take care that uh, your log messages will be uh, um, treated in the same way for all, all agents. Uh, then we have the new component, log metrics, which filters uh, the entries and generates new metrics. I will uh, tell more about it in the moment, uh, in a, a couple of seconds. And then we have the uh, come back. Then we have the log persister, which is uh, storing the log messages in Elasticsearch. Uh, we can query the, the logs with uh, with the UI with Kibana. Uh, we have here also the authentication plugin, which controls which users, which which roles. Uh, can access the, the logs. And as the uh, planned development, we also uh, want to add this, this uh, path here, uh, which means that the log API should be able also to query the logs directly from the database. And that's the complete, complete combined architecture. Just as long as I don't have to touch the mouse again. Uh, let's see. So the combined architecture, I mean, there's a lot of similarity here, which is in part why we're doing this. We've got similar technologies. We've got similar architectural patterns. Similar, for example, similar usages of, the, of Kafka. So in the center, again, is the same, pretty much the same diagram that I showed earlier with metrics. And then on the left is logging. And then on the right, we've got events, which is still uh, in progress. Uh, if you've seen me talk in the past, you might have seen me talk a little bit about the events uh, uh, solution. That, that's still, um, that'll be coming. But a lot of similarity between all this, which is the reason, one of the reasons why we're, we're trying to, uh, we're, we're combining these projects. And then, and then we're gonna talk about a use case later where, um, and we take you through the sequence of when a log message gets generated, how we generate metrics from that. So the idea isn't to operate these two projects as you know, sharing a few things and having them be mostly independent, but uh, we, we want to compose these things together. So when you consume a log message and you do some uh, parsing on it, you can, for example, detect if there's an error in your log file. And that's useful information, but ultimately what you'd like to do is um, alarm on that so we can generate metrics from our logging system and then alarm and threshold on that later on and then send notifications. So that's kind of the, the, the grand vision for this um, in the future that we're trying to get to. I'm not going to touch the mouse. <laughs> the next section, what's new? The update of the project. So um, let's start with the central part with, with the lock API. 
We have completely rewritten the, the API. So we have the, the version 3. We added uh, patch support for the, uh, for the logs. So you, uh, the, you can collect uh, several, several logs in one batch and send them in one request. We uh, s additionally put uh, metadata to the logs in form of dimensions. Um, which is just uh, key value pairs, which give additional uh, information about the logs. And uh, since we are now integrating the, the logs and the metrics, we uh, keep them um, the same as in the metric part. So you can easily correlate the logs with the, uh, with the metrics from specific services. Uh, we have dropped the uh, plain text support. We support only JSON now in the version 3, and it's completely only Python implementation. In the previous versions, we had uh, Java as well. We have deprecated that. And that's the short specification of the API. We have a single, uh, single endpoint, v3.0 slash logs. Uh, the required headers is the authentication token and content type. And the standard response when everything goes okay is no content. The payload can look like this. We have basically always two parts, dimensions and array of... Pardon? Array of logs. Uh, in that case, uh, we call these dimensions global dimensions because they are uh, common for all the logs which are sent in this request. But sometimes you would like to uh, monitor more than just one log file and you would like to send a request for more than one message. So you could also put the dimensions for every single lock object, like here. So we have this example of local dimensions. And the third possible case are mixed dimensions, where we have like a combination of, of both. We uh, take the common part of, uh, from, from all the messages to the global dimensions part, and then we have local dimensions here. Oh, come on. And uh, then it can come to the case when, when you have kind of conflict between the keys in the global and local dimensions. And in that case, the, the local dimensions are more specific and they update the, the resulting uh, dictionary. So we have the new API, then we also need new agents. As I said before, we have Logstash. Uh, we have written the, the output plugin for Logstash for communicating authentication with Keystone and communicating with, uh, with the API. And we have Beaver. Uh, the capabilities of the agents, of course, they support the new API. They uh, support configurable patching, so we can, you can set up uh, how big the patch size of the uh, of the single request should be, what should be the maximum time for collecting the logs. Uh, they authenticate with Keystone or caching the, the tokens for performance reasons. Um, that's the example of the, of the configuration of the Logstash uh, agent. So we can see here the sections with uh, Local dimensions, they are specific for, for, this, for these log files. And here is the configuration of the output plugin of the agent. What we can see here is the URL of the log API, the version of the API, the Keystone URL, uh, the part with the credentials, and then the new part, uh, the global dimensions, which are varied for, for, the, uh, 
for, for, for the whole agent, for, the, for every single request from that agent. And then the configuration of batching, so we have the maximum number of logs, the maximum elapsed time for correct, collecting the messages, and the maximum uh, batch size in terms of uh, kilobytes. Now, Roland, you have performed some, some analysis on, on performance. Sure. <clears throat> So, you know, performance is central to the solution. We've done a lot of analysis on it. There is a benchmark at that location in GitHub. Uh, the performance that we were able to obtain running on a, uh, we measured this on a MacBook, Retina first generation uh, with um, four workers running with Unicorn is 18,000 log messages per second. Uh, assuming 100 log messages per HTTP request, and each message, I list that here, was 1,000 bytes. Um, and I say note, uh, and this is what we measure within our you know, Helion distribution, for example. Uh, but if you're using log info level, uh, we're measure, you, you would probably see around 500 log messages for 100 node compute node deploy. So 500 is far less than 18,000, so we think that we're well within tolerances there for uh, operational monitoring. Of course, the goal in the future is to expand logging as a service out to make that available for tenants, similar to something like Logly. But um, that, that's the, our first step is to use this for operational type monitoring. And uh, just a note there on that configuration that we do need to have memcache deployed in the Keystone middleware to do auth token caching. Uh, you can't do this sort of thing and have every single auth request go to Keystone. The round trip latency would be too high in that case. Uh, so that's just an additional part of that performance analysis. <laughs> I can't touch it. <laughs> now the, the new. Hello, are you hearing me? Hello? Yeah, so um, that's the, oh, <laughs> that's the, uh, the new component, uh, log metrics, which is responsible, as I said before, for uh, filtering the log messages and generating the metrics for the, for the metrics uh, part. Um, let's take a look once again at the workflow, how, how, it, um, how it works. So uh, we, have the log, we collect the logs with the agent, authenticates, and to the API. API checks the token, validates the input, yeah, appends the, the project ID, and pushes the log messages to Kafka Queen. Then we go to the transformer, we normalize the messages, add additional fields common for all the logs from our complete system, come back to Kafka, and then comes the log metrics. It filters all the error and filter mess and warning uh, messages and generates new metrics which are then sent to Kafka and can be evaluated by the threshold engine. Uh, it checks the, the, uh, against the alarm definitions and uh, checks if the threshold has been achieved and in that case it uh, triggers an alarm which then comes to the notification engine and uh, email or uh, webhook or pager duty notification is sent. Yeah, so it, it's the uh, feature which is combining these, these two words and uh, bringing the new value. Some other changes and updates in the project. We have developed the DevStack plugin for the Monasca Log API, so we can easily install it now in, in the DevStack environment. We have updated Kibana to the version 4.4, uh, 
implemented uh, the plugin for Kibana for authentication. Updated Elasticsearch and Logstash to the version 2.2, and we are still working on the change in um, Monasca threshold uh, for support of sporadic uh, uh, metrics. Uh, the issue here is the metrics which are generated through the logs metrics, they are not coming in regular periods. They are just coming then when the warning or error is there. <laughs> so uh, in, in that matter, it is, the metric is different than the um, common, common metric which is coming from, from a Monasca agent and uh, Monasca threshold cannot uh, couple with that. And that's the last update. She didn't really make it to the, to the release, and I think it's the only reason why she's not called Mona, uh, Mitaka. <laughs> anyway, congratulations, Tomasz, and uh, best greetings. Demo. How much time do I have? Not much, really. The last time I was doing that, I just mistyped the password, so now I saved it. So let's go to the to the Monasca dashboard to the monitoring panel overview. Oh come on. Yeah. So uh, we have some alarms here. Um, that's the overview of the system. I can see that most of the services are running good. Apart from identity service, I have a warning here. Let's take a short look at the dashboard first. I have, oh no, no, not that one. I want to <laughs> here. Um, yeah, so I, what I'm showing here are the new metrics for warnings. We can see there are some warnings here for identity service system and networking. I haven't produced any error, perhaps I will. Mm, I still have some time for questions. So, um, I just want to show block storage. Yeah, so this is the alarm which was launched uh, for the metric name lock warning. We get the dimension so we can see which uh, log file has uh, launched the alarm, which service. We can also go to, I wanted to show something more, but we don't have time. We can go to Kibana. Uh, so we have the, the flow of the logs and we can show some dashboards here. We have here uh, so, uh, um, donut chart with several services and log levels and the histogram of logs and the log messages itself. We can quickly search for the log level warning. Yeah, so I just filtered all the, all the entries for the warnings. We can see these are only warnings. They are for identity service, compute, and block storage. Kibana is really powerful, so we can search and do fancy things with that, but I don't have time to show it all. What I wanted to show is that you can create these alarms here and see the, the, metric, the metrics here and here, if there are any errors. Okay, thank you. That's Oh, we, I'm out of time.
questions? Might have time for one. Can I ask a question? Yes, sure. sure. Uh, it's me. <laughs> uh, so uh, you were telling that uh, Monasca supports uh, tenancy, and uh, I had the impression that OpenStack users can use it to store the logs, metrics in Monasca, and then query them. And at the same time, you showed that you store uh, OpenStack logs itself in Monasco, ir irregardless of tenants, of tenancy itself. Uh, is it kind of a feature that a a admin tenant has access to OpenStack logs, or how they, how this correlates to each other? Your like statement that tenancy is supported, and uh, at the same time you like store OpenStack logs. Who has access to logs? Yeah, so what we would typically do, what we're doing right now for, like, in our distribution is uh, we'll deploy the logging service and then all of the, 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 call it the admin account. The admin account is, has, basically there's agents running on all of our physical infrastructure. So in our case that would be Beaver, or the log stash to support it to. So that agent would you know, read the log files out of our log, whatever, our log Nova, our log Neutron, et cetera, to get all the log messages for all the services. And then uh, that agent would uh, send those to the log API, and then they would go in that system below. So that's a, an endpoint, and that endpoint uh, can be registered and can be both a private and a public endpoint, right? So uh, now, if it was public, Tenants could do the same thing. They could send the, their log messages into the system. Currently, we don't have a query API, right? So that's not going to be very useful to them, but that's something that we will add in the future. So today, we're, you know, we're moving in the direction, and uh, so all those log messages will be there for the operator, and then they can use uh, the combination of Elasticsearch and Kibana to actually visualize uh, their logs and generate reports, et cetera. Does that answer your question? Uh, yes, seems like yes. So okay. well, it looks like you covered two cases. You uh, like store OpenStack logs itself, and you provide uh, tenants and means to store the logs as well. Exactly. Yeah, that is the case, and that's true for the Manaska metric system as well. Only in the case of Manaska, uh, you know, that project that part of the project is further along, so that endpoint is available usually publicly and. Uh, tenants can deploy the agent within their VM mm -hmm. and send metrics, which then they could use to query and get those metrics out. Uh, and then if they want to visualize them, they would have to also deploy something like Grafana locally, do that visualization. They would have to deploy, they wouldn't have, we don't have a, a de well, actually that is supported, I'll take that back. You could use that in Horizon today and, uh, and visualize the per tenant metrics. So logging is going to be similar. We'll have agents running. The physical infrastructure will be monitored. And then tenants will be able to also use that solution for themselves. Now, the other part that uh, we do with like metrics is the Manaska agent will um, send metrics into the tenant's account. So like if they're VM metrics, you might want to know if you know your CPU utilization for your own T uh, VM that you've created. So we do what a, a cross-tenant post in that case. So we have a um, if if your client that's sending the data is, has the delegate role on it, then it can publish metrics to another tenant, and then that tenant can look at those metrics. Even so, it doesn't always have to be the case that the tenant has to publish the metrics into the system. And that case uh, might make sense in the logging case too, but you know, I don't think tenants really want to know about N Nova log files or Neutron log files in that case. So uh, when we come up with examples or use cases that make sense for that, then we will have that capability too. Thank you. You're welcome. Notification capabilities do you get on um, um, sort of log patterns of interest? The same notifications which you have with standard Monasca, so uh, it is email notification, webhook, and page of duty. So then, so what information would I get back in the email? So you know, if I pick up the log message that disk twenty one has failed, 
in my disk array? Am I going to get that in my email notification? Um, so, yeah. Um, Depends how you configure your system, yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so in the in the standard installation now you will just uh, get the dimensions so you can get the dimensions of the metrics which uh, yeah. at the moment it's just path component service and uh, log level. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So there'll be and then um, as we develop the log stash components, there's something I'm, in each metric. The metric in Minaska consists of a name, a metric name, these dimensions, which are basically similar to what we're doing for logging. It has a value and a timestamp. And then there's also something called value meta. Yep. And so the value meta is, it looks like a dictionary, yep. but it's not involved in the identity of the metric. It's additional information about the metric. And typically what you do, you would store in there for metrics processing is like if you were monitoring an HTTP, uh, server, it would contain the status code and the text message, like internal server error, if it's a 500 uh, status code. So we can put additional uh, information into the metric. We haven't done that yet. That hasn't been a focus. So we can stuff that data. Uh, so when we generate the metric, we'll stuff, we can stuff that data in the future. That will contain additional information for logging purposes. But yeah, good question. Haven't really gone down that path too far yet. Okay, thank you. Uh, when exactly this notification uh, logic takes place? While you are streaming the data into Strom, or once you collect the data? Yeah. So I'll answer it. Okay. So so Storm evaluates whether the alarm is triggered. And then it publishes back to Kafka uh, what we call an alarm state transition event. And so the notification engine, which is another component in another process, uh, consumes that. And, uh, and then uh, it determines whether that state transition is associated with any notification methods. So based on the alarm definition ID that's a part of that message, it can look in the MySQL or Postgres database and say, oh, should I send a notification? And which one should I send? Are there uh, Manasca resources exposed in heat? And if so, what's the viability of replacing some of their alarms with Manasca alarms? OK. Uh, yes, they are supported. Um, so. So this is uh, also an area of sort of a continual development, but the heat templates are there to support this. And we support webhooks in Manaska, so we can send a webhook to heat and then the necessary templates can be run to you know, bring on more VMs or uh, destroy VMs depending on you know, what the case is. Uh, the, the continual work that's gone going is today that notification is a one-shot notification. Uh, and so we're adding support for what's called periodic notifications. And in that case, what we'll do is we'll, if you configure the notification with a, as a periodic notification, then it'll resend the notification periodically, like a minute. And the reason why that's required is, let's just say your CPU utilization goes above 80% and you spin up another VM. And a minute or two later, the VM is running, but your CPU utilization is still above 80%. Heat doesn't have the capability to detect that itself and get tr and to you know reevaluate uh, the state. So it has to be told that the um, CPU and the alarm is still in the triggered state. So we'll send that notification, and then Heat uh, will uh, go ahead and apply whatever logic it wants to like. If it's been more than five minutes and it hasn't gone below 80%, it can start up another VM. Uh, so you can use Manaska and Heat in place of Salometer. And that's a big area of development for us right now. Thank you. Any more questions? Any questions? All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for attending the session. Thank you very much.